Hi, I'm Seth Front, the Communications and Event Coordinator of Shomre Torah Synagogue. I'm here with Monique Smallson, who's a member, and she's on the front lines of the battle against the coronavirus. Welcome, Monique. Hi, Seth. Thank you so much for having me. Hello to all my um, congregants and my STS community. So for those of you who do not know what Monique does, and she's giving you a clue based on what she's wearing. Monique, why don't you tell us? So I am a nurse practitioner working in a skilled nursing facility who got uh, hit hard with the coronavirus and have been working on the front lines trying to help take care of our patients and be there when their families can't be. So you have the coronavirus. Tell us a little bit about how you got it and how uh, the hospital was part of that? Well, when everything first hit, of course, people were only recommending masks if you were sick, whereas now they're recommending masks for everyone. And the countries that have been less hit had started doing that initially. So we really weren't as prepared as other countries as far as protecting ourselves. Because there were so many cases that came out suddenly and we knew so little initially, we were isolating patients with any kind of a cough. So our isolation numbers went up, which left us without any personal protective equipment. We were short of masks, we were short of gloves, we were short of cover gowns, we were even short of the signs that you put outside a door reminding nurses not to go in until they've put on protective equipment. Um, we had to handwrite with marker on a piece of paper and stick it to someone's door because there just wasn't enough and we were getting so many patients with coughs. We didn't know whether or not they were coronavirus, of course. Uh, hospitals were sending patients to us without testing them initially. If a patient didn't have a cough and a fever, they were sent back from the hospital to our facility. So we were getting positive patients that we ourselves didn't know and weren't aware of. So with all this going on and working long hours trying to help my patients, I did contract the coronavirus. I didn't get the same symptoms that they have been telling everyone about. I had more uh, GI symptoms. I thought I had maybe a stomach flu. I thought I had a, a sinus infection. I had a runny nose. My cough was really not that dry cough with coronavirus, but it was a cough that you'd think you had with, with a sinus infection. And at first it made sense to me because I thought, well, I'm wearing the same mask over and over again. It would be very possible. However, when I found out that I wasn't getting better, I went ahead and got tested. And that's when I found out I was positive. It was about 10 days ago. So your case has been relatively mild compared to others. I mean, in the press, all you hear about are the worst examples of it. So if you're at, if someone's at home listening to this, what do they need to do if they even think they have the coronavirus? Well, if you're at home, <clears throat> first know that all you're hearing in the news, as Seth just said, are the severe cases. And I can tell you that if we did the same kind of reporting on influenza, you'd hear a lot of the same things, people going in with a bad flu that turns into pneumonia, which is what the coronavirus is. It, that's the worst effects it's having on people is it's giving them pneumonia and without your lungs able to breathe, this is what's causing the, the really bad effects. And it's, it is a little bit scary though, because sometimes people think they don't have uh, a bad case of it, but it's continuing to infect your lungs and then all of a sudden your lungs st start not working as well. Right, and, and that can also be from what a secondary infection, which is common with any pneumonia. You can get a bacteria when you're weakened and they, when they do suspect it, they will put people on antibiotics immediately. But if somebody feels that they're having symptoms and it isn't just a, a dry cough or feeling short of breath, it could include a headache, it could include um, nausea, diarrhea, it could, which leads to dehydration. So if you're feeling any symptoms that you think you might be positive, please go for a free coronavirus test. It's a simple nasal swab. 
Some places do an oral swab where you actually take the swab yourself, rub it inside your mouth and drop it off in a little bin and they test it and they'll tell you if you're positive or negative. As we have more tests available, you're going to see a higher population of people who have had it with little or no symptoms. Again, you're only hearing about the people who have had a severe case. And the concern is not that there's so many of these severe cases, but that small percentage of cases that are severe enough to go to the hospital, that tiny, tiny percentage is enough to clog up all our hospitals. And this is what New York saw and luckily they're overcoming it. This is what we would have in any flu season. We get an increase in patients who are very sick who need to be hospitalized. But in our regular flu season, we've got that big period of five months to spread out those cases. With coronavirus, because we don't have any protection, all the cases are coming at once you know, within a couple months. And that really is enough to overload the hospitals. But if you have it and you think you have a mild case, stay home. You don't need to go to the hospital. A lot of people are worried that if they test positive, they need to be hospitalized. And that's not true. You only need to be hospitalized if you're really sick. So stay home, drink fluids, have somebody deliver matzo ball soup to you. And you'll see that in most cases, you'll get over it. Or you'll find when they start to do the antibody testing that you may have already had it and not even known. The, those little episodes maybe of sneezing or that one time where you thought you ate some bad locks, that could have actually been all you were going to get from the coronavirus. So um, let me just ask another question. What are the best ways to prevent getting it in the first place? We're all sheltering at home and that's a good start, but, and they've talked a lot about washing your hands. What other precautions should people be taking that we might not be thinking about? Well, as you said, you're right. Washing your hands is really important. And with the coronavirus, they're talking about it as respiratory. It does affect the lungs, but it really does come mostly from touching surfaces. So wipe down all your surfaces in your kitchen, in your bathroom, wipe the door handles with an antibacterial wipe every day. Even though the virus doesn't live very long on surfaces, nobody has shown evidence as to the exact length of time that lives on a surface. If you think that you, something has been exposed, uh, let's say you're concerned about groceries that you bought, put them in a bag and put them aside for a couple days for your canned goods, and then you can use them. You can also wipe down your canned goods. Uh, if you buy produce that's already packaged, you'll probably feel safer. Things are not, the germ is not lasting on surfaces, as, like I said, as, for a long time. It mostly is from touching a surface or touching something that's contaminated with the coronavirus, and then your hand goes to your mouth. You've maybe touched a counter and then made a sandwich for yourself. People think, oh, I don't touch my mouth, but you don't realize how common it is. Wear your mask when you're out. Try to stay six feet away from other people. When you're in your home and you've been around your family for 14 days and they haven't shown any signs and they haven't been outside, you can feel pretty safe and pretty comfortable. But you still don't know if you go out to the grocery store and there's something something there. So definitely washing hands, wiping things down, wiping doorknobs, wiping the faucet handles. Uh, if you can keep an extra roll of paper towels in your bathroom and dry your hands with paper towels and throw those away, that's always a good way to prevent the flu symptoms any time of year for any kind of illness. Well, that's very good advice, Monique. And, and I guess now we're all just hoping that that the testing can get ramped up so that everyone can get tested because that's, it seems to me that's when we're going to be able to, to get out of our homes a little bit more. Yes, I agree. Testing to see people who have had it is going to really help because it will bring down the percentage of what the actual death rate looks like right now. The other thing is the antibody testing. It's a blood test that they're working on getting more approved by the FDA. Currently only one company is approved, although many companies are doing the test. Um, once more companies get approved by the FDA to say that yes, this test is accurate, you'll know if you've already had it, you've built up immunity. So you can not only protect yourself, but protect people around you. 
Thank you. That's good advice, Monique. Thank you very much. And I hope you get healthy. You're just at the end of this and you're going to be going back to work soon, right? Yes, I'm going back on Monday. Well, that's good to hear because we need you help. Now, so now that you're going back and, and you've gotten it, are you still going to wear a mask? And, and the, do you need to? Can you get reinfected? I guess that's really my question. No, most likely, although they, again, because this is such a new virus, we don't have a lot of evidence. When we're done with this, they'll probably do a lot of retrospective analysis and look at who got it and who didn't and what things are helpful and what things aren't. But most likely, you will have immunity once you've had it before. Like I said, they haven't been able to get enough cases to tell. But if it's like every other virus, our body fights it, our body builds up immunity, and we are protected from it. Having said that, though, I would still wear a mask because my patients will be in a weakened condition. And while I may not be able to transfer COVID to them, I want to make sure I don't transfer flu or any other bacteria to a weakened patient. Well, thank you, Monique. It's been a pleasure talking to you and continue the good fight that you're putting on. Thank you so much. And um, thank you everybody for your support for those of us who are on the front line. And I wanna thank our stay at home heroes. I know how hard it is and your doing your job is making our job a lot easier in flattening the curve. So please hang in there a little longer. Um, and let's get through this one time and be done with it. Thank you. Thank you.